What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is about the shock transfer of David Luiz to Arsenal. Ugh. As per usual, before we do get into the video, I'd like to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload videos every single day. Today's video is going to be me expressing my thoughts and opinions on this transfer. Now, it's kind of like a, I don't want to say a blockbuster transfer, but it's certainly a significant transfer in this window. I want to talk about what it means for David Luiz, what it means for Frank Lampard, what it means for Chelsea fans, uh, I guess what it means for Chelsea as a club, and what it means for Arsenal. Right, to start off, why? Why would David Luiz move to a London rival just after signing a two-year contract extension, which by the way, breaks the Chelsea law of giving an over 30-year-old more than just a one-year extension. So Chelsea bent the rules for David Luiz, almost understandably. He's been an important figure for the club. A couple of days ago, Matt Law tweeted or certainly published an article for The Telegraph about how Luiz was waxing lyrical about the new regime at Chelsea how everyone is training like a family and there was a togetherness and you know what from the outside looking in you'd assume that you know the band's back together the um his old comrade frank lampard who he won the champions league with is now coaching Pe chelsea people around the club petr Cech obviously is back jody morris and a few others there seems to be this great feel-good factor David Luiz was playing in pre-season, it all seemed perfect, you know, the football was going to be exciting, etc. So what happened? Well, you can speculate a few things. First off, the initial reaction would be, why now? Especially with Frank Lampard, you know, those images of them celebrating the Champions League final together, they should be that camaraderie, they were teammates, they won, you know, football's greatest competition together. Does that mean they're the best of mates? Not necessarily. In fact, when you talk about the sort of relationships throughout the great team, even though he won that Champions League final, David Luiz, he's not in the sort of old guard camaraderie, is he? Like, you think of how close Lampard is with John Terry. I mean, and Jody Morris, they're like best mates in football. I'm not sure there was ever that connection between David Louise and Frank Lampard. So perhaps the initial assumption that they should be really close mates is just an assumption. So you play for a club that you love and the next teammate comes to coach you. Whether you're indifferent to him or maybe you had troubles in your you know, playing career together, if you're not really good mates, like I don't think John Terry would have a problem with playing under Frank Lampard. Certainly Ashley Cole didn't at Derby. But maybe Louise did because it's a bit different for him. Maybe he feels he won that final with him and now he, he's not gonna be seen as like an important coaching figure and he might not be seen as a first choice player either. So maybe there was a rift between Frank Lampard and David Luiz. So would he not be a first choice centre back? He's played a lot obviously recently in the last couple of seasons, two or three seasons. David Luiz is 32 years old, going on 33. Chelsea have five centre backs at the club. David Luiz. Tamori, Christensen, Rudiger, and Zuma. That's a lot of good defenders. And you know who the odd one out is there? And it's not to do with quality, it's to do with age. And that's David Luiz. So apart from David Luiz, you have four young, talented centre-backs that want to get into this team. Frank Lampard has waxed lyrical about wanting to implement youth, pace, and excitement into his management generally both at Derby and Chelsea and only a couple of weeks ago Frank Lampard was sitting in that press conference talking about Kurt Zuma who's giving him a glowing reference when Zuma wasn't sure he'd be starting at Chelsea he was thinking of pushing for through a transfer to Everton where he was on loan last season and you could understand that he was held in such a high regard at Everton and starting you know week in week out got his um, first team place in the France team things were going incredibly well for Zuma, so even if he does love Chelsea and respect the club, you can understand why he'd want to perhaps go to Everton if he thinks he's not going to get a guaranteed place. I would speculate Frank Lampard guaranteed him that first team place. And I would also assume Frank Lampard has gone to David Luiz and said, you know what, Zuma's going to be my guy, he's a perfect age, he's got loads of Premier League experience and he's my type of player. 
So you and the other four, three rather, the other four in total, I'm gonna sort of look to find his partner. And to be honest, Chelsea's most recent and biggest investment in that area is Rudiger. Rudiger has leadership qualities that I'd imagine Frank Lampard would respect, and he might see long term the starting partnership of Kurt Zuma and Antonio Rudiger. And of course, there's the other two centre backs, Andreas Christensen who has played a lot in this Chelsea first team and undoubtedly is a very talented young footballing centre-back. Frank Lampard probably respects that and absolutely wants him circulated in that team and challenging. And of course, there's Tomori, who is Frank Lampard's boy. Remember Tomori was Derby's player of the year last season at centre-back. That is hugely important. He's obviously held in an incredibly high regard to Tomori and Frank Lampard will want to keep him. So where does that leave you? That leaves you with four young centre-backs that are all talented and all probably should deserve to be fighting for a spot in that Chelsea first team. In my opinion, if a team is playing a back four system, they should have four centre-backs, no more. Certainly four first team level centre-backs, you know, you might have an academy product that's floating around that gets the odd sub appearance in a cup. But if you've got five high tier centre-backs, there's gonna be a problem. So who is the odd one out here? Well, there's got to be David Luiz in terms of investment looking forward and generally Frank Lampard's style of management and vision for Chelsea Football Club. So, where does that leave us? David Luiz wouldn't be happy with that. Even if he's promised initial early minutes this season to sort of bed Chelsea into this, you know, campaign while Rudy is still out and rehabilitating, he's not necessarily going to be happy about that. So, there's the understanding how maybe Frank Lampard and David Luiz aren't the best of buds anyway, but Frank Lampard being straight up with him and saying, look mate, I want to be competitive, I've got this vision for Chelsea, I'd respect and, you know, be happy for your help early doors, but moving forward, I'm going to be straight with you, these four are my guys. And remember, this is a completely understandable approach from Frank Lampard, considering the tangible facts and how old each player is. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean Frank Lampard and Chelsea wanted David Luiz to go. Another really important factor in this story is David Luiz is a great ambassador for Chelsea. He does all the community days. He's like a very compassionate, loving individual. Like he's always doing stuff with the kids that's really nice. He does all the media day stuff and he's a very devoted, you know, player. He's a passionate player when he plays for his team. So that leaves David Luiz with a difficult decision. Stay at Chelsea, be a bit part player and do a lot of sort of behind the scenes smiley work or try and play a bit more and you know and really end your Premier League career with actual minutes. I mean the obvious thing is Arsenal, they're a London rival and that's gonna sort of hurt Chelsea fans but it's not the first time it's happened. People, I mean I personally wasn't mad when Petr Cech went there. I've never thought less of Petr Cech and he's always remained a top tier Chelsea legend for me and I completely understood why Roman Abramovich gave Czech his blessing to go. Now really, this is kind of is a similar situation because it's not he's not a second goalkeeper with one guy in front of him. He's now maybe the fifth choice centre back, at least once everyone's fit and integrated. So it's a difficult one to digest because I don't think he'd ever want to directly hurt Chelsea. But the fact of the matter is this is directly strengthening a rival. Chelsea and Arsenal are going to be fighting for the same sort of position next season, roughly, right? No matter what your opinion is of how Chelsea or Arsenal will do next season, they're going to be around each other and they're going to be direct rivals. Arsenal are top heavy and they've got an excellent attack. What they don't have is a good defence or centre-backs. Even if David Luiz isn't Chelsea's best defensive centre-back, there's an argument to be made that at the best a lot of times with his mistakes he's maybe in that sense the worst Chelsea centre-back now I did a comparison video of Harry Maguire a few videos ago where I explain how he his stats hold up to Harry Maguire he's not bad he's not that bad defensively I mean I also explained in that video how he's probably the worst Chelsea back Chelsea centre-back defensively but I was using that as more of a highlighting tool for the Harry Maguire deal and the 80 million price tag regardless he strengthens Arsenal. He's got amazing distribution, which players like Aubameyang and Nicola Pepe can run onto long balls. So that's gonna hurt their opposition. And even if, like I said, even if David Luiz isn't the best defender of all time, and even if he's only a temporary solution for Arsenal, it is 
strengthening a direct London rival and a rival that you'll be sort of both clawing at for a similar place in the league. Let's go back to a human perspective. David Luiz has been a great servant for Chelsea. He's won Premier Leagues, he's won Champions Leagues, he's won Europa Leagues, he's won FA Cups, etc. He's always given everything for the club and he's played for injury in high profile games and for that Chelsea should be forever grateful. He has a life in London, a family, an established business. You could understand why perhaps he wouldn't want to leave London to go somewhere up north or abroad to play, you know, the last two or three seasons of his career. And I don't think he'll be playing at Arsenal for two or three years. I don't think he's going to be a 36-year-old starting centre-back for Arsenal. I reckon he'll probably see them for a tough time and then maybe have, you know, a swan song somewhere else, maybe in Portugal or Brazil or something. So, you can either be like a tribalistic football fan here or you can kind of be a bit more sort of compassionate and human and look about the situation. Remember as well, David Luiz is very close to Roman Abramovich. Roman Abramovich gave um, Czech his blessing to, to go to Arsenal. Maybe something similar has happened here. It will be very interesting to get Frank Lampard's take on this, but the fact of the matter is, Chelsea will be okay without David Luiz. It's not an issue of Chelsea losing, you know, if Eden Hazard went to Arsenal. It's not, it's not like that. I mean, Chelsea have good defenders. They have good young defenders with great skill sets. It's more of a representation thing. Um, we'll have to see how it pans out, but I guess if David Luiz comes out with something and explains to Chelsea fans that, you know, I had to do this because of this, I want to do some playing minutes or whatever, perhaps more perspective will be offered. Anyway, transfer deadline day madness, right? And David Luiz loves the transfer deadline day transfer. Remember, that's how Chelsea got him back. Anyway, what do you guys think of this move? Do you condemn David Luiz for the move? Do you think, well, we we're gonna phase him out anyway and at least he can get some minutes at the end of his career? We've obviously got four very youthful, exciting, talented centre-backs. Do you think he really strengthens Arsenal that much? Because maybe a partnership of Mustafi and Luiz, I suppose Rob Holding's back, it doesn't scream amazing defence. You know, again, it's not one of our best players. It just seems a bit like a symbolic issue. Anyway, get down in the comments and give me your thoughts. Obviously, I'd like to ask if you've enjoyed the video. Please do like the video, that means a lot. And also, you can become a patron of my Patreon and gain exclusive access to Q&A videos for $1 a month. Link is in the description. And feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick. And that's on both Twitter and Instagram at Football Yannick. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger. Like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I let me be.